years later, the art of film had grown immeasurably more sophisticated. In Teenagers from Outer Space, the teenage extraterrestrial hero was called Derek. With two other aliens, he stepped out of a flying saucer into a Hollywood backlot, ideal grazing land for his Gargan. A Gargan is a lobster-like domestic monster, which under earthly conditions swells up and terrorizes any district not already terrorized by the mighty Gorga or the killer bees. But more of the massive lobster later. Here come the aliens to show off their designer spacesuits and a command of the English language exceeding that even of the wild women of Wongo. Surface readings, register above minimum requirements. Morrow, go below and bring up the young Gargan specimen. Now the decision depends on its reactions. Wait, Captain. I have found evidence of intelligent beings on this planet. Of what concern are foreign beings? Of none to you, Thor. <laughs> Because you were so unconcerned when you destroyed this small creature so bravely. It was no more than an insect. But it had life. And that life you had to take to satisfy your endless hunger for killing. Silence, both of you. Proceed, bring the gargon. That will not be necessary, Captain. <laughs> Conditions here will be reported as unsatisfactory as they were on the other planets we have charted. By what authority? You will prepare for takeoff. The ship will leave this planet immediately. According to our code of operations? You may forget the code of operations, Captain. Only civilized beings could have made the inscription on this metal piece. We shall not have the thousands of Gargans brought here to destroy them. You have concern for foreign beings over our mission to locate grazing land for our Gargan herds? Recall. It is necessary as a reserve food supply for our people. Our people? We live like parts of a machine. We don't know our fathers or mothers were raised in cubicles. The sick and the old are put to death. It is the one and only way to maintain the supreme race. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. <laughs> Perhaps because it can't stand any more of the dialogue, the Gargan escapes puts on weight and eats a passing archaeologist, not played by Jose Ferrer. In part two of this program, we'll be meeting other monsters, even more terrifying than the Gargan, but never one that cost less to make. After having the alien spacesuits tailor-made, there was no budget left over for building a giant plaster lobster and photographing it from a suitable distance. So they took an ordinary lobster and held it very close to the camera. The audience probably died of fright in the drive-ins. Cellar, Gramps, with Betty. What makes you think Betty's in the cellar? She's out somewhere with Derek again. Everybody's supposed to take shelter. The monster from the cave, it's approaching the town. Huh? Then that's where they must have gone, those crazy kids. <laughs> Joe, we've got to try and find them. You mean they... Come on, then, let's go. Derek. The cricket. Run, go start the motor, hurry!